he remains undefeated. 15 and 0, you've been manifesting it all week, Ian. You're a happy man right now. I'm happy, but I'm also irritated. I'm irritated. I'm I didn't get that finish. Um, MVP's never been submitted. I wanted to submit him, especially when I got to that position. I'm f***ed. But he's one of the most awkward people. I called him a ball ache for this whole training camp. Like, he's just going to be irritating to plan for, to prep for, to get ready for. And everyone was like, you shouldn't say that. I'm like, no, I know he is. I know what he's doing. His whole game is to irritate and frustrate people. The single biggest key to victory today was patience. And it paid off in full. And the game plan, it seemed, was to use your grappling and obviously training with yeah. the likes of Damian Meyer and Shooter Box, it, it, it came to fruition tonight. It, do you know what? It wasn't the game plan. The game plan was to go in there and go off the cuff. I know how talented I am at striking. I've been saying it all week, I'm the better striker. But what I didn't want to do with someone like him was give him the opportunity to open up and give him something big that looks good to the judges. I said this a long, for a long time. I didn't throw a single calf kick today. He wants people to do that. So what I did was I just remained patient. I didn't throw a lot on the feet. I was waiting, waiting for his entry. There was a lot of moves, a lot of combinations I had planned, but he didn't enter all the way because he was very cautious as well. I said this, he was going to be cautious. We see no showboating. We see nothing because he knew how good I am. And he knew how, to, how much he had to respect me in that octagon, but also, my distance control was elite. He tried to teat me, I caught his leg. I have that control, I have that fight IQ. And when I seen that opportunity, he's like, let's go, let's, let's just do it now. Let me see if I can get this finish. And look, you nearly had the finish. It was pretty tight. And he as well. Yeah. Look, that, that for me is just little details on locking up things. I said to Damien, do you know what we need to do now? We need to go every possibility of finish and we need to lock in the minor details hand position, head position, feet position. We just need to go over it all, and it needs to be the same on the feet. I need to start working on these finishes because no one's more irritated on the planet than me than have a <laughs> decision in a row. Even though it's against elite competition, it f***s me off, so. Well, they even said on the broadcast, you've not been given anybody easy on your no. rise upwards, and, and we saw it again tonight with MVP, very experienced, obviously, what he's done mm -hmm. in the other promotion. But in terms of what's next for you, and I know we always ask this question immediately afterwards, and you're not shy of, of putting no. out some names, is Never. Colby still the one? But I wanted to throw out maybe a Jack Della Maddalena as well. I mean, he looks like he's out of the Perth card now later in the year. Who makes sense? I see I see bigger opponents than Jack. Jack's phenomenal. I'm a massive fan of Jack. 17 fight win streak. I'm yeah. a massive fan of Jack's. But when there's people that have 18 and 0 records, like a Shavkat Rachmanov, I'm like, let, me, already, let yeah. me take that O. Let me be the guy to prove that I can be him before anyone else does it. I, the one thing that would piss me off is if I fight Shavkat and someone just fucking beat him, I'm like, I don't want to fight anymore now. I want to take his O, 15 and 0 versus 18 and 0. Kobe's never taken the fight. He's running scared, he himself. And after tonight, he's like, yeah, that sea lad, he's jumping on someone's rented yacht, acting like it's his in the middle of Miami, and he's swimming with the fishes. <laughs> Look, there's Usman, there's one of the, the greatest champions we've ever seen. I believe he's gonna run scared and he's not gonna make the call either because he doesn't want to fight someone so young and dangerous. I just have to see how the rest of the division plays out now. Yeah. I'm in the driving seat, there's only a couple of people I can fight that are gonna be above me. I do believe I'll be ranked number. There's five in the world now after this fight. I think they'll move Kobe and Gilbert down. They'll keep Jack above me, potentially. That's what I would do if I was in charge of the rankings, but I'm not, but it doesn't matter. But I believe there's massive opportunity for some huge, huge opponents, and I'm excited for whoever it is next. And I feel like whether people love you or hate you, they can't deny you. Your performances speak for themselves. And it sounds like you're someone that you just block all that out. You, you do you. So I want to ask you, are we going to see you in Manchester? Are you going to be uh -huh. sitting there cage side watching that fight mm -hmm. between Leon Edwards and Bilal? And who do you think takes that one? Firstly, I told the UFC two months ago, when I win, when I win in UFC 303, mm -hmm. I want to be the backup. Okay. I want to be there just in case anything happens. Look at this fight card. Yeah. Look how many <laughs> fights fell through. Dan Ige stepped in today. Amazing. Do you know what I mean? Anything can happen. And I want to be there just in case, whether it's Leon, whether it's Bilal, whoever it is. Do you know what I mean? I respect both of those guys' skill set and talent, and I'm aware how good they are, but I know I can go out there against any man on the planet and get my hand raised. So for me, I'm going to be there. I've offered to UFC, Hunter and Dana. I will be the guy to stand in and make sure that there is going to be a welterweight world title fight if anyone pulls out. So for me, 
that's next. I will be in Manchester. And I do think if Leon and Bilal fight, I think it's Leon's fight to lose in every way. I think he's clean, he's crisp, he's very talented, he's very hardworking, he's very driven. He's talented in all aspects of the game. But I'm still, I've said it already, I'm interested to see how Bilal's training camp has been with Khabib and can he implement that, that grappling style. It's, it's a lot of questions, it's why it makes for a great fight. All right, we will all be there cage side to watch. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your celebrations you, and a well-deserved win tonight. Thank you for talking to us. And the purple shorts are here to stay? Oh, they're staying. <laughs> they look so... Tell me that they look good. I, I look, I think they look phenomenal. They look good, I mean? they look good. I and got the blonde the hair. I was shredded out my mind. Got the purple shorts. Life was good. Get my hand raised. And I, I don't care what anyone in the world says. I'm a happy man. I'm going to go home to my wife and kid and I'm going to have a great night. Doesn't get much better than that. Thank no. you. Thank you so much, Carla. <laughs>